Hi everyone, Jason and I are going to have a fun day and we're going to do um, a couple of these photos but this one's going to be my favourite, steampunk and this is Tim Holtz folios uh, they come with the folio itself it'll have this string through so that you can um, fix it closed it has the spine here that you can fold and cut however you want. We have a grand plan and I have taken the first step here and I have used my ferro metal effect to do all the edges. Now when you use ferro metal effect on the edges you've got to be conscious that this has got grit in it. So the second you've put it on it's fine but you will get marks under your paper which doesn't matter around the edges, it kind of adds to it but you don't want lots of little ones under here so you need to give it a sand uh, soon before you put your paper on and I just use Tinnel Sander because it's nice and flat and, can, and gets a nice even flow through the paper it's easier to use than trying to use a snow block or a little bits of sandpaper we, we plan to be quite adventuresome with this folio and we are going to have a very dimensionalized front we're going to have a window through to the back and we're going to create a uh, sort of a, a viewing area here to go through to the embellishments we're putting on behind and then we're going to cut our spine and we're going to put our cascading spine we haven't quite decided which way this way and we'll have cascading spine going down to this part being aware that we can't cover that area that's going to be able to we're going to be able to see through. Um, so I think I've taken care of all those surfaces with the feral metal effects from Viva Decor. Um, next I am going to use my archival pads because this is very brassy and I do intend to put quite brass looking embellishments in them but I'll add paint to them so I can get them a bit grunged up. So I'm going to do a bit more texturing around the edges using sepia in the archival ink, black in the archival ink and a bit of russet and just to get a little bit more into this even though you'll only be seeing a little little tiny bit of it I like to have that sort of dimension and I'm probably going to go quite deep over these areas because I kind of like, I mean most people would cover the, these with paper and these were put here, these um, folds so that you can have this quite a thick folio and fill it up but I kind of like the look, way it looks so I don't think I'll cover paper over those areas I like it Okay, here we have the folio. Now I've used, on this back page here, I've used a piece of paper from Graphic 45 from the Steampunk Spells called Clockworks. And I'm probably going to put that on the sides as well. But when you saw me stamping, I've actually made this, which is, um, I've stamped words on there. You have seen me doing these techniques and, and I've got other, other videos online. Uh, where I colour these LeBlanc stamps and what I've done is I've done the background and then I've stamped a couple of extra balloons uh, put glasses on the gentleman who's another LeBlanc stamp there's beauty on there there's texture on there and I've just raised some of those surfaces now they're actually raised at all different levels the hands I've got coming quite high, the gentleman I've got coming quite high but these are our flatter surfaces and two different finishes I've put on them and this I plan to go into the back of here this hasn't, this has just been coloured, nothing's, nothing's happened yet 
and we are actually going to hang our proper working um, clock in there. I have these clocks in store. We have taken it apart. It actually has a front like this and a very fancy back. These are operated by battery, so we want it to be, be able to get it in and out. And we've taken it apart because I'll use that for something else. And I'll also use the front for something else. And this is actually going to be raised quite high in here. And we're going to make it so it's actually visible through this hole that we have put in the front of the folio. There's going to be um, a lot of embellishments going on there. And this is going to be very dimensional. The front is going to be very dimensional. Um, so we'll be doing all sorts of frames and playing with uh, Tim Holtz cogs that I've cut out, um, clocks that we've cut out and textured, um, paste to texture these up, use one of your embossing folders so you get nice texture on them and I'll be putting those on the front and adding in other bits that I've got to create a very dimensional front. of what I'm doing is we have cut some gears out of Tim Holtz die using chipboard because it gives me a much more dimension and I've laid them on here I've got a fab scrap word across here I have put stenciling into the background using the ferro metal at this stage the colors that you use aren't important because this is actually all I wanted the texture down um, so that I can put colours over the top of it. I'm probably going to use some of the precious beaver to call precious metal colours to come over the top and sponge it and get the detail out. So all of this will be covered in different ways. Um, I've been using my stencils to get some dimension back there. I'll put the names of what they are in the description if you're interested. And I've also I also cut a my stencils apart because I want to get them in, into certain areas. I don't even think about them being, I just do, I just cut them apart. And um, uh, you can't see it at the moment, you won't see it till I start putting colour on here, but I've actually used this one, which is, I can't remember the name of it, something like Grunge Edges. Because the gel, I've used a heavy body gel to go through these fine dots, because it's a gel it's dried out clear so you will not see any of that until I use colour to bring all this up. Um, I have done put some dimension on the back here using the clocks I don't know whether you can pick up what's on there um, I've put these metal edges on all of these will be in the descriptions so um, you'll be able to to see what I've used and I'm not too worried about the, all the colors that we've got I've got going on here I had one lady have a look at it and she said oh, I think it looks delightful you should leave it how it is when and maybe uh, in, another time I would but I want to bring out lots of colors and have lots of things going on and I but I wanted that metal effects into the background as well and um, onto the project because of the dimension it gives us so that's where I'm at with it. The next step will be uh, to colour this up. Uh, I've also used, this is one of Tim Holtz dies. I'm, I'm going to be, I've made some of these straps that I'm going to be putting on here and around. Again, they're at the moment textured with metal effects. I'm using my book slightly differently. When you get one of these books, it's usually folded in like so with this over the top cloth going around but I want the dimension here and I wanted to be able to embellish just the front so this is actually going to tack under on mine but I would like some of that to be coming through sorry about the scratchy noises that's the metal effects um, so this will be coming through and you'll be able to see these evenly spaced down here and those also will be coloured up 
and then I'll get to be putting my scene into the back of this. I've been working on this and putting down my um, graphic 45 steampunk pages and I got to this side and I managed to mess it up and I had some things under there. Now this glue sticks down really well so when I tried to peel it away it wasn't very successful which means for me I've got a big job of putting sanding it or doing something like that but I decided to just take advantage of it. So I am going to leave some of that there and I'm just going to go over the top and bring this page into more like this front part is. And to do that I could put down some ferro metal on it but I don't really I'm not sure that that's what I want to do. Maybe I'll apply some later. I'll see how I go. But this is how I fix mistakes. I just play with them until I get it right. So I'm going to try adding some of some archival links onto this and get some colour and things going. It might look funny for a start but um, if I don't like any of this I will send it back and start again. where I'm going to colour this all up. I'm going to use two different products. I'm going to use the Precious Metal Effect colours in this liquid small form. Really pretty, really gorgeous. But I'm also going to use the 3D stamp paints. Um, they have a thicker, it's hard to explain, but it's, it's, it's a more reflective uh, mica in them. Come down here, you'll kind of get an idea. Um, I'm sorry, I hope you get, I hope this is not too reflective because these shiny surfaces tend to be where you get all the detail in real life, they ca they don't translate when you show on to, show them on a video as to what they look like. But if you have a look at this, you'll note down the bottom here, uh, it's sort of a thicker look, it's a thicker and a, a rough appearance and that will be your 3D stamp paint reflect and these smoother ones are your precious metal effects uh, metal colour sorry precious metal colour looks and in behind I've actually put some of the metal effects just to texture just to see what what the product was going to do okay so you'll see me put this all on I've darkened the front of it quite a lot because I want it to be dark underneath the precious metal colour and the stamped 
3D stamper, it will color, cover a lot of that. But I'm all about layers, putting different layers on to get the effect I want. And if I get to the end of it and I, and I hate it, I will change it. This is also where I've had to bring in product. Uh, when I mucked up the front here, all I've done is I cut out some image f just from the, that paper, roughed up all the background, and later on I'll put a few cogs and things around to bring those two pages together. We'll still be changing the colour of this again, probably because I don't know what I'm going to do on this front one as I go along. We're going to be using different tools, spouncers, which are really, really good when you're using your um, 3D stamp paint from Viva Decor, and uh, sponges that we use for ink blending, just ordinary sponges, um, uh, and my fingers, whatever grabs me at the time, I just grab up. But those are all things. I like using these in the 3D stamp paint because the 3D stamp paint is particularly thick and um, got a high shine on it so we'll try that. side cover now. Uh, this is a weathered clock, Tim Holtz weathered clock die that I've cut out and I've coloured up using my ferro metal and other um, products, just archival links just to give it the colours I want. Some cogs, these are from Tim Holtz cogs here and these are some of the Prima Finibar cogs that are going on this side and I'm just going to be shaping this all up um, into a seam ready to put my book on at the top here. You'll see me, I've covered a piece of card here with the same steampunk paper, paper as I've used on the rest of the um, folio 
and we're going to be using the steampunk on the edge die from Tim Holtz to create um, cogs along the bottom and that's going to go up there. You'll see me do that and then I'll put the book down. We've also planned, just had a little experiment to see if it'll work on some of the things that are going into this album. We will be using that same on the edge die to um, put bits into these cogs onto our photos and into our tags that are going to go in the album. But that's just an experimental one. It's to see if it would work and we managed to be able to do that so that's great. Um, you're going to see me putting some metal bits in. Now this is 10 seconds studio metal and I'm going to be doing a whole another video on all the 10 seconds a more advanced video to show you how to do it. It's actually quite simple and I use my Sizzix Big Shot to do some of my embossing with them. But I also have, they have different uh, moulds if you will in their series but I, I, I cut them all apart this is a big one and you can see I cut out the hearts and I cut out bits on it and these bits that I'm using are actually these bits in here that came from out of out of up the other way out of this particular piece and they're just leftover bits when I've been making other projects um, and I just like to use them in my what I'm doing now but that's a whole another video, video but I wanted to explain to you what I was using these pieces these scraps I'm using have actually already been I've got double sided tape on them um, and because this particular project when I was using my 10 second studio metal it needed to be one that if you pushed on it or poked at it it wouldn't move it's actually been filled in the back I'm laying out things he here how I would like to have them. Just a little heads up when you're doing something like this. If you're anything like me, you get a bit scatty and sometimes you have to put things away and you end up not knowing where you've placed them originally because these aren't stuck down. So it's probably obvious to you, but one of the things you can do is take a quick photo um, so that if you have to take this apart, you can put it back together how you want it next time. 